go to the Word of the Lord today. If you'll turn to the Word of the Lord, I'd like to uh, begin reading in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew, chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. I want to say once again, uh, we appreciate all of those that are tuned in online. Appreciate those uh, by our webcast. And I thank you so much for your support. We have so many ways to outreach people, not only through the message, through the word in our church, but through means of webcasts, our internet, and uh, our radio broadcasts. We want to continue to pray for those wonderful ways, tools to outreach, but I do love and appreciate you so very much, and uh, we're praying for those. We've got a lot of sickness, a lot of those that's been affected by uh, the, the COVID uh, virus, but we are praying for our land, praying for our community, praying for those all over. We welcome those that are tuned in from all uh, uh, various places. We have some that are tuned in from other countries, our missionary friends, uh, those from Tennessee, and uh, I have family in Kentucky there. Uh, we've got people just from Mississippi. Uh, we've had in California and Washington, the state of Washington, God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, as we approach Thanksgiving this next week, we look forward to giving the Lord thanks and reflecting on God's goodness. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, begin with verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I'd just like to preach just a few moments on this uh, day. The world needs you. The world needs you. Can you just lift your hands this way and ask the Lord just to bless his word today? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. Appreciate the word. The world needs you. We don't need the world, but the world needs you. Jesus said that the believers are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its ability to season the world, then the salt is useless. We are the light of the world. And we have the responsibility to illuminate our world, our communities, our parish, those others are tuned in your counties. The church is a city on a hill. We are called to stand out. The Bible is saying not to hide, but to stand out. I've heard of immigrants who came to this great country with empty pockets and a heart full of dreams and made something out of themselves. One immigrant from Russia who came with just $80 in his pocket, created a business that became very successful. The question was asked, how did you become so successful? And the statement was that I just looked at the world and I determined what was the most important thing that the world needed. I looked at the world and decided that I would become what that world needs. And I made my fortune by being what the world needs, Gary uh, Halgen. Today, our world has many needs. Definitely, in 2020, the world has many, many needs. Our world is overrun by hatred and strife and sickness, violence, corruptness. The economy is in turmoil. Our government is in turmoil. Chaos. Our nation has become a cesspool of partisanship. Religiously speaking, 
our nation is immorally bankrupt. American Christianity has embraced secularism. We have put into place weak pulpits that have birthed weak believers, weak believers that have produced weak values. What does the world need from the church today? The world needs the church to be more than what it has been over the course of time this past year. Modern Christianity in this nation has failed this nation. The world needs the church more than ever. We need to be that voice in the wilderness. The world needs you. The world needs me. The world needs the church more than ever before. The world is a wilderness. It's uncultured. It's uncivilized. It's wild. Religious people asked John the Baptist in John 1 and 21 through 23, and they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? In other words, this was the Greek way of saying, Are you Elijah? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said unto him, Who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? The world is looking at the church more than ever before. The world is looking at our example more than ever before. The world is looking at uh, the Bible. I believe people are turning more to the Bible than they ever have before. Whether or not they're obeying and listening to what God's Word is saying, that's another thing. But I believe they're looking to uh, the Bible. They're looking for answers. Uh, they're needing something. And so the world is looking at the church and they're asking questions. Just as was asked to John the Baptist, saying, Who are you? Who are, who are you, church? What, what, what are you representing? John the Baptist replied, in verse 23, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. John was not concerned about fitting in. People today are so concerned about fitting in in a time and an era when we don't need to be fitting in. Amen. To the religious culture of this day, the priest during John's time was basically a celebrity. They were dressed in the best. They had the best attire. They, they lived in the finest of finest. John was not that. He didn't look like a light in the eyes of maybe the priest or maybe some people. Uh, John wore camel's hair. He ate locusts and honey, and he refused to dress like the religious world of his day. He didn't care what the religious world thought of him. He didn't care what the priest and the scribes thought of him. He didn't wear their clothes. He didn't eat their diet. It, 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 I, I didn't come, he, he said, to compromise. I come to be a voice. I didn't come today myself to compromise with the world, the things and the beliefs that's going on in our nation with this generation and this age. But I come today because the world needs a voice. I come to be a voice crying in the wilderness. We can't live and we can't eat of this world and try to be like the world and then try to turn right around go to our little Sunday morning service, our Wednesday night Bible study, put on our little tie and uh, walk in and say you've been to church. But what we need to do is try to hear a word from God. Amen. We need answers. We need a response. We don't need to hear a little patty cake sermon or something to tickle the ears. But what we need is a word from God, a voice of what we need to do in difficult times in this world. And I didn't come to, to, to tickle your ears or read you a fancy story because you can turn on the YouTube or the, the television or something and get your entertainment for tonight. Amen. But I come to deliver a word from the Lord, which is a voice crying in the wilderness. The world is a wilderness. The world is crying tonight. The world is aching tonight. The world is hurting tonight. People are in desperation uh, today as I speak. And so we need to hear from God. The world needs a voice in the wilderness. They looked at John. It didn't matter that he had the camel's hair, that he ate the locusts, and he ate the honey, and he refused to dress like the religious world of his day. Uh, but they came to hear a voice. It was the voice. It wasn't the fancy clothes. It wasn't the fancy suit. And we don't come here to just 
uh, put on a show, but we come here to hear what the Word has to say. And they said, are you Elias or are you Elijah? And Elijah had been dead for hundreds of years. He had been long dead. And the world is looking at us, uh, this apostolic movement, religion, wondering the same. Are we a dead religion? No, I come to tell you, we, we have something living on the side of us. We're alive today. Amen. The church is not dead. Amen. We're alive. We need a voice right now. Elijah may be dead. We don't need a church uh, that, that is, is uh, diagnosed with laryngitis or one that whispers in the wilderness, but we are one that cries out unto God uh, in the wilderness. This world, the world needs you. The world needs the church. Somebody ought to just give the Lord a praise. Amen. Uh, today, Ezekiel 22 and 23 says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the, the land that is not cleansed, nor the rain upon the day of indignation. God told Israel that uh, through the prophet, through the prophet Ezekiel, that thou art the land that is not cleansed, not rain upon. In other words, Israel, you are not only dirty, but you are also dry. I believe our world is not only dirty and corrupt and evil and sinful, but it's also dry. There's a drought. There's a famine. What of? Rain? No. I'm talking about the spiritual drought. I'm talking about there is uh, less prayer, less fasting, less church, less worship, less faith in God. There's a drought in America today. And so we got to somehow pray for a spiritual rain. We've allowed spiritual water to dry out. Our land needs cleansing today in the physical America, but also our land in the spiritual needs a cleansing today. Amen. We need a church that uh, is spotless, that is righteous, that's holy, that is a well springing forth with living water. Amen. We're an oasis in the desert. We're supposed to be a place where somebody can find spiritual uh, water, where somebody can find something to eat when they're hungry and the, the spiritual of, of, of things. And, and we've got the world on us and our garments can become spotted and blemish, but we need to find an altar and we need a cleansing of God's blood, a cleansing of God at Calvary. Uh, you are a land that is not cleansed. You're a land that is, hasn't been rained upon, has your has your land, I'm talking about your individual lives, your, your soul, has it been rained on? Uh, does it need saturation? Does it need uh, a, a pouring out of God's presence? Uh, are your garments in need of cleansing today? Uh, your land is dry. America's dry. We need uh, to, 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 to pray for a spiritual rain to pour on this dry land. Ezekiel 22 and 25 there is a conspiracy over prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made uh, her many widows in the midst thereof. The Lord said that the preachers, the Lord said that the prophets of that day uh, conspired against the people, like a lion ravening uh, a prey, taking everything off the body. Uh, just tearing up the body, the carcass, just like a lion would do uh, when he kills uh, uh, the deer or the antelope or uh, whatever the victim is, and they're taking precious, valuable things. Let me tell you, the devil has taken precious, valuable people out of our world uh, today. The devil, the enemy, this virus, uh, it's of sin, it's of uh, evil. Uh, it, it's, it's something that is taken away, something precious today. Not only an individual's life, uh, but it's also taken away the precious thing, which is our freedom to worship. The devil will like nothing more than to take away our freedom and our time of worship. All over our nation, people's being threatened about their worship. And the devil would like to take that precious thing. Sounds like modern Christianity, preachers consuming the church, conspiring together, seeing what they think that they can get out of it. And not only that, but trying to take away our rights and liberty to worship God. Not seeking. People today are seeking uh, pleasure. People today are going to the house of God. Ministers going to the house of God seeking uh, selfish gains. Not seeking a move of God. 
but that's not going to supply the needs of the world today. Not, uh, not seeking a move of God, not seeking the will of God, and the Word of God will consume everything off the body of the church. It will take those precious things away uh, from the house of the Lord. Uh, it left widows. It killed many things that were to protect and provide and that would cover the family because of the evangelists, the preachers who, who, who could not get in the pulpit and preach the Word of God. The enemy has taken the precious things, which is not only the house of God and our freedom and our liberty, but he's trying to take the truth of what needs to be preached, what the world needs. Do you see what the world needs is what uh, uh, the world is trying to take away? Amen. The enemy is trying to take away exactly. It's not a vaccine. It's not the next shot that's going to help you get over the COVID. He's trying to take away the truth. He's trying to take away the word. He's trying to take away God today. That's the precious thing that is talking about. Give the Lord a praise today. TV evangelists and unfortunately online evangelists are preaching a message that just tickles the ears. And, and, and it will just tickle their fancies and uh, but they are taking everything off the bone, the precious things making widows the family is gone, the covering, the protector the Bible says in 26 our priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things the priest, they have put no difference between the holy and the profane neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my sabbaths and I am profane among them. They put no difference between what is holy. People don't even know the difference between holiness and what's profane. They, have, they haven't shown any difference between what is clean and what's unclean. What good is going to the church? What good is saying you're part of religion if you don't even know the difference between what is clean and unclean? Because they have approved sin. That's why the government, that's why our world today approves sin because they don't know the difference between what's clean and what's profound, what's unclean. God said, I am pro profane among them. There's no line between what's clean and unclean. You're either clean or you're unclean. You're righteous or you're unrighteous. You're holy or you're unholy. We need preaching to put pressure on our lifestyle, on our worship, uh, on our living holy we need to type preaching that convicts us. If it doesn't convict you to change, then something's wrong. Amen. We need something more than what we're getting today. The world needs preaching. They need the word. Amen. And there is a difference. Amen. There's a push for this. My responsibility as a pastor, as a man of God, is to keep the church different from the world. Amen. It's to bring out the best of God in the house of God, in the church, but also for somebody to see a light, to see a difference, preaching the word, singing and worshiping and keeping this place holy before God. In other words, I just, I have to be a voice. There are so many voices that are out there in the land calling people and persuading people to do various things, but I'm talking about a voice, the voice, a voice crying in the wilderness, something that's distinct, something that is different from what the world is crying out, amen? This world needs the church, amen? This world needs you to be filled with God's Spirit. The world needs you to have church in you. That is different from the world, different from what they're living. We need to be what the world needs. Mom and dad, people in the church, our families, our children, uh, you need to be the church, not the world. We need to be a light, a city, uh, with a, a light on a hill, a city on a hill that everybody can look to. Amen. We need to be that voice. God, help us to be what the world needs today. God, help me to be the daddy that my kids need me to be today. God, help me to be the husband that my wife needs to be, me to be today. God, help me to be the pastor that my church needs. But God, let us be the church. Let me be the voice that my parish and that our state and our country needs us to be. Let me not be the kind of pastor that gives and preaches what people want. It's not about what you want, but what. Let me be the kind of pastor that I can preach what you need. Amen. That gives and preaches what people need. Let me be your voice through the help of the Lord our God. Some people only live for God just on church nights. Amen. I challenge our church when we can't have service and it's online. It need, you need to sit there at, in that house 
little, little Johnny don't need to be playing the game station. Uh, the little daughter don't know, need to be in there playing Barbie. If we get to the place and, uh, and we have to we go back online, it, it, this needs to be the church. We need to gather together as a family. Sit down, little Johnny. Sit down, uh, uh, little, little girl. And let's sit with mom and daddy. And, and, and let's, let's have church. Amen. But if we're blessed to be able to be in person and come to the house of God, let's not daddy worship God and mama sit there. Let's not mama sit there and daddy sit uh, 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 worship God. Let's not let mom and daddy get a blessing and, and, and little Johnny and, and, and the other little girl sitting there watching mom and daddy get them involved. Amen. Because the world wants to take them and, and the only thing that we can get, uh, that the more we can put in them in their life, the more that we can pull them from this world. Some people only live for God on Sundays and Wednesdays. My Bible tells me that I got to live every day for the Lord. Today is a day for salvation. Some people need to see our light. The world needs you at Walmart. They need your good attitude. They need your representation. They need your good spirit. They need your Love and kindness, they need to see that when somebody else is not displaying that at Walmart or the school or outside these walls because that's what they see. Amen. The world needs, the only way that they can uh, meet the expectations of the world is, is if we can be what the expectations are for the church. People are tired of dried up religion, dried up church. When they come here, they need something life-changing. God, I pray that the messages, I pray that the singing, I pray that the testimonies, I pray that the witness is life-changing. They may not understand it or comprehend it, but they should never be able to forget the experience that we give them. God, do something here in this place today. Do something in my life today Some, that somebody, it would make an impression and they would never forget. There's a movement with the church today to make it less like it used to be. We can't give in to that. The church was born in an upper room with an upper room experience where God poured out a spirit that the believers thought that they were drunk. The apostle Peter said in Acts 2 and 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet of Joel. Let us be a church that is living, having church and being a light and being what the world needs according uh, to the prophet Joel. I rebuke anything less and resist anything against God's outpouring today. Any experience, just an average uh, just, just service, an average prayer, I rebuke that today. I want something beyond our expectations, a move of God. Amen. The world needs an experience with its creator, its savior. We need a greater experience. We need more of what the world needs today. The experience is not going just through the motions, amen, but receiving something from God. We need to touch heaven, amen, because we have to be what the world needs. The enemy is trying to attack our churches with stubbornness, with rebellion, with unrighteousness, rebellion, sin, worldliness, drunkenness, unfaithfulness, mediocre spirits, anything goes. Quick, get it over with mentality. The enemy is seeking to kill and destroy the church. If God can't move in the church in our lives, what hope does the world have today? If the church doesn't have victory, how can the world get victory? A mental health psychologist said in a study that when a person of any culture receives good news or celebrates some type of victory, the automatic reflex response is to raise your hands up in a V posture. Spelling out victory. Amen. I'm thankful that we're Victory Apostolic Church. We're always in the position of V. Victorious. That's a natural response. They did a test with two different groups. Two to five minutes, they asked one group to get on the floor and hunker down with their heads facing the floor. And the other group were asked to remain standing with their hands in that V position for two to five minutes. After doing this, without knowing what group was who, the psychologist doing the interview noticed that the ones hunkered down failed the interview. 
They struggled and appeared weak. The one standing up in the V position with their praise up, amen, their heads up high, it said were energized, decisive, strong, showed a greater confidence. So he reversed them doing the same tests, same results with different people. And they said that in the psych- psychic world, psychology world, that it's about an energy and a force that motivates and lifts our spirit when you make yourself big. What reality I'm seeing here, I'm not in the psychology, the study of the mind, but I do know when the praises go up, the glory comes down. I know that when your praises are set up, amen, God responds and inhabits the praise of his people. I don't know about all these studies. It makes sense to me that if you got your hands up, Man, there's already part of your victory because your mind's made up that I'm going to do something. Amen. Psalms 134 and 2, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. We're not making ourselves big, but we are making him big. It was Moses way back when he was on the mountain. The enemy was fighting and his arms were down. The Bible says as they were losing the battle, they noticed that his hands were going down. And it was there that they chose to prop up his hands because as long as his hands were up, there was victory. Amen. Somebody may not feel like lifting your hands today, but you need a brother or you need a sister or a family member, somebody just prop them up, amen, and begin to praise God, amen. We've come to express and lift up our hands. The world needs victory today, and the only victory is going to be through Jesus Christ. I've got the victory I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got this upper room experience. The enemy don't want you to lift your hands because he would like to, to declare defeat today. But I'm telling you what the world needs today, it is, and that is to be victorious and through the church. Amen. Amen. We've already went through the fire. We've already went through the floods. Amen. And we've already went through our time of the promise that was set down from heaven on the day of Pentecost. But Joel said that he prophesied there would be another rain that would pour out from heaven. And in this world that is in a drought, we're ready to receive. Are you ready to receive? I look at it like this. When you open up your hand, you're ready to receive something. When you put your head down, you're ducking. You're not going to get what's poured out upon you. Somebody needs to open up your hands, lift up your, your, your eyes to heaven, and lift up your voice, be that voice in the wilderness, in the world uh, that the world needs. Would you lift up your hands? Let's pray. Thank you, God, today. I know, God, without a shadow of a doubt, God, what the world needs today, and that's you. It's not none of my messages. It's not none of my songs. It's not none of my ideas and my, my feels about things that I think would help people and comfort them, and it's not about giving people money and gifts God, but it's all about offering this one precious thing, and that is you. God, the greatest gift that we can give is ourselves and, the Lord, to you. But the greatest gift that we can give the world, God, is our testimony, our light, our witness. God, let us be, Lord, that which the world can see and what the world needs today. God, let us be that example. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Get your hands up. Get your V up today. Amen. Let's celebrate our victory today because that's what the world needs today in Jesus' name. God bless you.